Hi, welcome to creating comics with color, line, shapes, and song lyrics. Um, my name's Tom Hart. I run the Sequential Artist Workshop. Um, it's an online school for comics. We do tons of workshops and um, some live, some pre-recorded. -pre we have a community over of over uh, a thousand people who are talking about comics all the time. You can come join us easily at sawcomics.org or learn.sawcomics.org um, and I'm going to show you something we do at Saw a lot. We make we make a lot of mini comics there and sometimes we just make them with abstract shapes. Abstract shapes are just shapes and colors and lines and things that don't really necessarily mean something specific, right? This is not a person going to a doctor or a car chase or anything like that. It is just some sort of shapes that sort of give us um, sort of feelings and that came from feeling and that sort of exist in a world of feeling and that's what we're sort of going to work on. So the first thing you're going to need is some drawing supplies. Anything will work, I promise. A marker, some crayons maybe, um, ballpoint pen will work from a pizzeria. If you've carved a stick anytime recently into a pencil, that'll work. Um, Paint really works really well too. I'm going to use a little bit of paint, I think. Um, and the first thing we want to explore in making some of these abstract shapes is to sort of try and create, you're going to hear a lot of clanging as I put things down. Um, try to create, uh, try to create a shape or series of shapes that represent certain things. And so for instance, the easiest one I usually start with is, what does growing look like? Maybe do two or th a sequence of two or three shapes that are, that represent growing. And I'll show you my example and I'll give you uh, a chance to pause it as I do, as I do mine. Um, forgive me for putting my thing down there. But So what might growing look like? I'm gonna use markers a little bit faster. I mean, I think growing is a pretty simple one. You know, that might be a sequence that represents growing. Something is literally getting a little smaller. That little magenta mark, I mean, is getting bigger, is getting a little bit bigger and then a lot bigger. So that's growing. You could do it again. You could do it with a little more A little more flare, <clears throat> maybe. Maybe that is this little dot, and then it's kind of like really exploding and then really just getting out there. Maybe it's a more explosive kind of growing, a more, um, a louder kind of growing or something like that. Take a second or two or a couple minutes if you need and try and try and create a sequence of two or three panels or two or three marks or two or three images that, that represent growing. I'll let you pause it here if you like. Um, okay, so the second thing is, okay, so that's, we've done growing. What does celebration look like? So maybe, you know, sometimes the way to do this is to look and see what, what does it feel like in our bodies, you know? And a lot of us are, are prone to doing this when we celebrate, right? Yay, wow, hooray. And so maybe what we maybe what we do is something like that. Maybe it's a two panel sequence, but it's like it's something getting more celebratory. Or maybe we change it a little bit. Maybe it looks like maybe we want to show before and after. And that's worth exploring too. Before And my figures kind of look a little human, but yours don't have to. I feel like a little bit of humanity helps, but there's one panel or one image on the left and then celebratory on the right. The second one is sort of celebratory. Hooray, yay, right? Celebratory. So the first one was growing and the second one is celebratory. So take a moment, we'll pause it. Pause it for a moment if you need it. And 
um, do celebratory. Cool. Piece of paper down. So let's do, what about another one? What does um, shyness look like? Or trepidation, which has a little bit more of a story to it. Like I'm, I see something, but I don't want to get close to it. Or, or I see something, but I want to protect something, you know, from it. Any sort of variation of that is fine. What might that look like? And again, any of these are personal to you. Your answers are going to be personal to you. They're going to be different, but I'll show you what I might be like. Again, I'm mostly, I guess I'm sticking with this magenta marker. I just did two panels, that's all. And I'm going to separate them by a big line. Trepidation, there's that sort of figure on the left, it's seeing the splotch on the right, and then it's backing away a little bit. And then in the second panel, it's backing away on the right. So I could play around with that if I think that was successful, if I feel like that does suggest trepidation. I could go a little bit farther, I could do it again. Feel free to do it a couple times. That's three panels there. It's sort of the same thing, to be honest. It's like noticing something and getting a little fearful of it. So it's like a little bit of fear. Okay. So that's cool. We've done three of those. Celebration, um, growing, and, tre and trepidation. Maybe try one more that's kind of like trepidation. Let's try secrecy. What does it look like if you want to keep something secret? And I'm drawing a little sort of variation on that, a little and I find that sometimes it changes a little bit as I go. So here's what I did. I did three panels of, can you see that? I can't see what I can see here. Um, there we go. The first one is like, oh, it's that little dot that this thing wants to keep secret. And it closes in on itself a little bit more. And then the third one, it completely closes in on it. And so it's keeping it secret. So do that. Take a moment. Pause it if you need to. That's the end of part one. That's our exploration. Just to get used to making marks and shapes and use, you know, I'm sticking with my magenta marker. I may break out the ballpoint pen, but I think for, for, for my ease right now, that's what I'm using. So, but feel free to explore other kind of um, paints or other kind of color, colors, excuse me. You could even have fun with collage. Okay, that's the end of part one. Take a quick break, announce part two and come right back. Okay, this is part two. Um, total change, <laughs> change of direction. I'm gonna write some song lyrics down. I want you to write down, take a notebook, take another piece of paper, I've got a notebook here. Write down some song lyrics that have moved you in the past. Um, that have made you happy or sad or that have really stuck with you. And sometimes it's hard to do this on the spot, so maybe you want to take a break also and, and look through some of your music or even take a walk and see what comes into your head. But here's the thing. The rule that we like to do at Saw is that the song lyric can't be more than five words long. Um, and the reason is, is it lets it be so it lets it be personal to you rather than taking like Taylor Swift's song lyrics completely or, or Sia's song lyrics completely. That'll be my example in a moment. Um, or Meatloaf. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, if you just take out five words, the odds are is that you can pull that, that small amount of words is um, simple enough and maybe even direct enough that it won't be at, it won't feel as much like you're using somebody else's words but just that you're like inhabiting the same feeling for a moment um, also it sort of removes that like am I just 
stealing somebody else's ideas and me stealing somebody else's words it sort of removes that from it too and a little song with a couple hundred words and you just borrowing five um it'll be fine so for instance i i do have a song by sia queued up here uh titanium by sia you know i'm I, i'm bulletproof nothing to lose is actually only five words and it's really close to like actually stealing it wholesale from Sia, but I think it works better. But like, if you were to include the whole thing, fire away, fire away, ricochet, you take your aim, fire away, fire away, then it's like completely like you're just illustrating a Sia song. But if you like take just like, can't hear a word you say, can't hear a word you say, that's actually six. Um, hear a word you say, that's five. Like suddenly we're removing it so much and um, that again, it becomes kind of like, personal and something you can use. Also, it works really well with simple images like these. Um, you start to put bulletproof, nothing to lose with images like that. It starts to really get kind of interesting. So like you don't want to do their entire chorus that you don't want to do their entire lyrics. I like to shoot for the most direct ones. I've, I've done like, um, one of my favorites is from Joni Mitchell. It's just, will you take me as I am? Will you take me as I am? I guess I use six sometimes. <laughs> uh, will you take me, I guess, is another one. That's four. All right, so anyway, write down three sets of song lyrics that might work uh, from w whatever your favorite songs are, the songs that have moved you. Take, you can pause it, take a moment to write some of those down. And then part three will come up next. And then part four will be integrating everything into a single into a single mini comic. So go ahead and take a break. We'll announce part three in just a moment and then I think it started. Okay, part three is the really intriguing part where it gets kind of personal. And um, we're gonna write down five memories. Um, and you can write these down anywhere you like. They're private to you. You can write them in a sketchbook. You can burn them afterwards or you can frame them afterwards, whatever works for you. Um, and I'm gonna write down them myself, but I'll also give you guys a moment to just kind of pause it. So the first thing to write down is a time of great joy, a time you felt great joy. That's the first thing. So I'm gonna give you guys, I think you should take um, 15 to 20 seconds. I'll let you pause it. Okay, great. We've done a time of great joy. Um, the next thing is a time you felt very small. A time you felt very small. Think of a memory where that might have been true. Um, and again, I'll give you a few moments to pause, but you can also pause the video yourself. The time you felt very small. Okay. Third one. A time, a time you were far away from home. A time you were far away from home. That's the third one. Write down a memory where that, where you were far away from home. In all of these memories, just the first thing that comes to mind is probably the best. And you could probably write one sentence or even less because your brain probably knows. Um, so again, I'll, I'll let you pause it if you need that pause. Otherwise, just take a moment. The time you were far away from home, that's our third one. Okay, fourth one is a time you were given a gift. A time you were given a gift. That's the fourth one. So write down some memory. And again, hopefully in your life you've been given lots of gifts and you can't, but use the first one that comes to mind or the, the one that feels the biggest maybe at the moment. Again, like tomorrow you might do this exercise, it'll be different. The time you were given a gift. Okay, pause it if you need more time and we'll move on to the fifth and last one. So the fifth and last one is a time where you understood where you came from. A time where you understood where you came from. 
And who knows what that could mean? That can mean lots of things. It could be very positive, it could be kind of negative, it could be could have lots of different kinds of emotions attached. A time when you realized where you came from. Okay, take a moment, pause it now if you need that extra um, minute to write any of those down. Um, I'll cap, recap real fast. A time of great joy was the first one. A time you felt very small was the second one. The third one, a time you were far away from home. The fourth one, a time you were given a great gift. And the fifth one, a time when you understood where you came from. So cool. That's all the preparation we need to do. Now we're going to make a mini comic. And um, this will be fun. I'll go ahead and uh, pause it if you need to keep going. And uh, we'll come right back with the fifth part. Well, welcome. Um, this is the last part. Now we're going to make a mini comic. We've got a bunch of material. We like, sort of know how to use color and line a little bit. We've got some uh, lines of text we can steal. Um, I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose, you know, or whatever you wrote down. And you wrote down three different ones because we're gonna. We're not really sure which one's going to work the best. Um, and you've got some memories to work with. And what I'd like to suggest is making a mini comic, the old fashioned one sided way. You take, an, you take a letter piece of paper, there it is. You fold it once this way. If you need directions, I'll make sure some more directions are on the screen or supplied with this. Fold it that way. Then you fold it this way one more time. And then you fold it the other way one more time you're folding it in half each way but in the opposite directions each time now you can open it up again and that will give us the clue for the next step so now what you've got is a piece of paper folded into eights right fold it one more time halfway back it should fold real easily because you've already done that and then rip this little part here we're going to rip from here to there right along the seam and it's going to give us a hole right in the dead center you can be sloppy about this, or you can be neat about it. If you've got scissors, that'll make it easier. But there we go. And now what we've got is that, which, believe it or not, goes right into a mini comic form by folding it, by leaving that hole right there, and letting it sort of collapse in on itself. You actually can't do this wrong because Wherever you fold this, when you fold it over, it becomes the first page. Mine's pretty sloppy, because I'm trying to do the video and do it with my bare hands at once. But there you go, and I'll do it again. That's page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, there we go, page eight. I'll do it one more time. I'm going to do it really fast this time. And I'll make sure that you don't miss out. that on speed, high speed one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one to eight. And now you've got a, a, a playground, a place to just sort of make a little mini comic and now is a good time to just use your intuition and play around with the shapes you've already created like maybe maybe 
maybe that's a character you know maybe that's your character maybe that's your starting shape and maybe you go now you go back to that list of five memories and you pull out one i'm going to pull out one a time when you were far away from home i took a lot of buses when i was in my early 20s across the country and i'm going to sort of write a i'm going to draw and try and draw those you know and you know i'm not doing this to be great i'm just sort of exploring what does one of those buses look or feel like maybe it looks like that that's sort of one for me and I try and sort of inhabit that that world again what did it feel like well it felt very lonely to be honest so maybe, maybe I draw my a little character alone over here and maybe this is a new page and maybe that is over there and maybe if I really want to make it feel alone I put some other marks over here or something that's starting to look like grass I don't know put more people over here <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm drawing exactly I'm trying to make it feel alone I think I need to darken some of these shapes if they're gonna feel like individuals but the fact is is they look like spirits up in the air I think if I were to really try and make them look like people, I'd bring them down to earth. So that's what I did for panel one, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's five. Five. And I took the bus out, but I'll put the bus back in, I think. Now I think my character, if it's a character at all, is going to get on that bus. <laughs> and all the other lines are behind it, like they've been left behind. I'm doing this fast, and I'm also not really um, doing this with a lot of the feeling I would do if I were alone and not uh, trying to record a video at the same time. Um, it's also done very nicely live on Zoom. We've done this very, and get nice conversations and things like that. Maybe I'll take a ballpoint pen and sort of add some some feelings, maybe some lines. When you take some moments to really sort of look at the drawings and sort of feel them, other suggestions will come up. Because we got in the practice of doing our celebration and our trepidation and our secrecy and things like that. And so I've added some ballpoint pen lines. It sort of feels like a horizon line there, but then I added, oops, I didn't add it there. I added what sort of felt like a little bit of a cloud here. I had a, there's the cloud and the horizon line and the cloud. Again, these are abstract, so it's not exactly a bus and a person waiting for the bus and a, and a cloud, but it kind of is also, and you can be as literal as you want or as abstract as you want. Previous version I did that I show sometimes is called Exclusion, and it's got three different characters that are three different shapes that sort of represent people, I guess. And this is one that I did previously. The lyric I don't even remember where it came from, but that's sort of the beginning. It says, I've done. And this sort of shape is maybe leaving, jumping up. I'm not sure. And the rest of the lyrics says, a lot. And this thing has sort of disappeared, but then like something new is sort of appearing behind it or between these two things. And then sort of getting larger in between these other two shapes and sort of spreading out beneath them. The lyric continues of things. And then all these shapes sort of merge. Wrong is the last lyric. So if I look at it, I've done a lot of things wrong. But it has this sort of gentle shape, disappearance and reappearance and, and uh, I don't know, it just has this nice sort of feeling to it, and it's called exclusion. Why? Um, 
I'm not sure why it was probably on, again on a list of some things I had and was playing around with. So this one, I'm really intrigued by my my Sia lyric, "I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose." So I'm going to try and figure out where "I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose" might go. And I have a tendency to spread it out over a long period of time, but I think I'm in this instance, I'm going to put it only on one one panel, one one page. And I think I'm going to put it on that one because there's this trepidation here. Again, there's that word. Here's that moment where like, is it going to get on this bus or not? I'm, I'm writing this sloppily. I'm bullet proof. Nothing to lose. <laughs> and so I've got that C lyric there. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. As it sort of like hops on the bus or something and then disappears and leaves all these other things behind. I kind of like that. It needs a title. I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's a title. Maybe the title is that. <laughs> or you can name it cloud. Or you can name it fear. Or you can name it strength or you can name it pull out a tarot card and name it after that pull out an episode of Peppa Pig and name it after the title of that anyway it's all sorts of things you can do with just like feeling and line and shape a little bit of like just stealing from your favorite things because your favorite things stir emotion in you and you want that emotion in your work um, and again you can do this any time of day you can do it any day it'll be different every single time you do it and then pretty soon you have a little box of these things and then when you want to if you are the kind of person who feels like you want to do a bigger piece a, a, a more polished piece or something you can pull out some of these things and say oh yeah there's a little bit of something there that i want to use this is a great way of testing things out and playing around with with art and feeling and that's just that's why we're here i think so again, uh, thanks for joining me for doing this. It's the kind of thing we do a lot at the Sequential Artist Workshop. You can find us at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, come join our community. We've got people doing things like this, but also doing more serious things like actually like scripting and actually drawing and drawing the figure and writing and outlining and critiquing and all sorts of things like that. Um, I'm really happy to, that you uh, joined, and um, I'm happy we had this time together. Cheers.